Well, hello again out there, Internet, and welcome to another edition of Required Reading. My name is Alex Hollings. I'm a Marine veteran, a journalist, and the editor of Sandbox News. And today I'm going to take you through five of our biggest stories of the past week. I'm also going to try to do it all through this head cold that I swear isn't the coronavirus, but, you know, probably keep your distance anyway. Our top story this week may raise a few red flags for the Elon Musks out there, because it's all about artificial intelligence and its potential combat application. Now, DARPA has been having eight different artificial intelligence firms square off against one another in virtual dogfights to see who can create the best artificial intelligence fighter pilot. Now, last week, the ultimate winner of that round robin, Heron Systems, squared off against a real human F-16 pilot in a virtual dogfight. Now, this bout was touted as a big deal, and it ended up being an even bigger deal, as Heron Systems' AI pilot beat the human pilot five times in a row, each time before the human pilot could even get off a shot. Of course, that doesn't mean that the days of human fighter pilots are numbered. It really means that this AI operated better in a simulated environment than a human pilot wearing a VR headset with minimal control could do. But there are far-reaching implications for this contest. As this technology matures, we won't just see this tech find its way into drones that can operate like fighters. We'll also find it working its way into the cockpit of manned aircraft. You see, once artificial intelligence can handle a lot of the more mundane tasks, it can take care of that while the human operators focus on the fight, the combatants, their allies, and whatever their mission objectives may be. This could really revolutionize military aviation, and it's not too far out. It'll likely be years before we see this technology really come to fruition, but when it does, it'll be a game changer. And while we're on the topic of drones, let's dive into our next top story from this week called the RQ-170, the Air Force's secret beast of Kandahar. Now, this story is all about one of America's most classified drone platforms, the RQ-170, and how we still don't know all that much about it. In fact, we're not sure if it's an incredibly expensive aircraft or an incredibly inexpensive or attributable aircraft. But what we do know is that the Air Force has been using it in combat operations potentially dating back to 2007. It wasn't actually until 2009 that the Air Force even admitted that this thing existed. I highly recommend that you give this article a read. It reminds me of when I was a kid and we heard rumors of this stealth fighter, but the Air Force didn't acknowledge that the F-117 existed for a few more years. I love that we're still doing this. I love that we've got classified platforms out there. And to be honest, I'm pretty into this RQ-170 thing. Now let's head back down from the sky to what I think is our most important story of the week, and it's called Women in the Military, Paving the Way and Shooting for the Stars, literally. And it comes to us from Sandbox News contributor Amy Dickey. In this piece, Amy goes through the stories of four incredible female service members who have paved the way for the next generation of women in uniform. She talks about women like Major Katie Higgins Cook, who was the first female pilot to join the Navy's acrobatic Blue Angels team. Then she talks about General Ann E. Dunwoody, who was the first female four-star general. I don't want to spoil the whole story because I highly recommend that you dive in and give it a read, but I'm telling you whether you're a man or a woman, learning the stories of these incredible trendsetters, these history-making female service members, will fill you with all the motivation you need to make it through the week. I highly recommend you read the story, and you can find it on Sandbox News right now. And from there, let's head out to the open ocean for our next story called Missile Barges Could Be America's Secret Weapon in the Pacific. It's all about trying to find a way to offset the huge numbers advantage that China has in places like the South China Sea. Now, America does have the largest and most powerful navy in the world with around 293 operational ships. But China's rapidly expanding People's Liberation Army Navy isn't the only force China wields in this waterway. China also maintains a huge and militarized Coast Guard and a maritime militia, which when combined with their navy amounts to something like 770 large vessels. This is a huge advantage in the Pacific, and it would mean real trouble for the U.S. Navy if war were ever to break out between these two powers. 
missile barges represent one possible way that we could really expand our military capability without blowing our budget. And I dive into how we could go about doing that in a few different ways. But effectively, it comes down to this. We take containerized missiles, or vertical launch missile tubes, and we mount them on existing commercial cargo ships. We reflag and rename them as U.S. Navy vessels, and then we use them as missile barges to supplement the firepower we have in destroyers and in cruisers that often accompany our carrier strike groups. Now, there's a lot that goes into making this work, making it legal, and whether or not it's actually feasible. So I really recommend that you give this article a read so that you can learn more about just how possible and just how likely this seemingly crazy idea is. It's on Sandbox News right now, so I recommend you give it a read. And let's end things on a high note with a story called The Secret to Fighter Pilot Morale is Apparently Chick-fil-A Sauce, coming to us from Air Force Fighter Pilot Justin Hazard Lee. In this story, Justin talks about a particularly difficult deployment to Afghanistan he went on as an F-16 pilot before his days as an F-35 pilot instructor. Morale was really low for Justin and his entire unit, that is, until they received a shipment of sauce from Chick-fil-A. Now, what's so funny about this is that this isn't the first time I've heard a tale of fighter pilots having their morale lifted through a shipment of Chick-fil-A sauce, I was actually able to dig up another video of an F-22 pilot talking to a boom operator in a KC-10 all about how he's got a whole box of Chick-fil-A sauce waiting for him back in his hooch once he gets done with this flight. I don't know what it is about fighter pilots and Chick-fil-A sauce, but if it works, it works. And this story is a lot of fun. I highly recommend you give it a read. You can find it right now on Sandbox News. That's it for another edition of Required Reading. I want to remind you guys to click like and subscribe down below. Hit that bell notification so that you never miss any of the great content we've got coming for you. We've already launched a few awesome episodes from fighter pilot Justin Lee. We've got some great content coming from military spouses and army rangers headed your way very soon. And of course, don't forget to check out our store. You can get a cool sandbox hat like this, great military gear, and all sorts of other stuff on sandbox.us. And of course, swing by sandboxnews.com every day for the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. I've been Alex Hollings, and of course, thanks for stopping by.